In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true. Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste a salt and empty earth. 
Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is in vain you are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If, if for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable of all people. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord.
with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes toward his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and insult you, and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For those who are standing, we have plenty of seats up front. Do not be shy. And I'm going to, we have new microphones. So obviously there's some feedback, so I'm going to try something, maybe. Does this work? Ooh. Still too loud. Feedback. again. So, when we first hear the words of the gospel, they're rather disturbing. What's wrong with being rich? Or being full? Or laughing or being well thought of nothing at all so whenever we hear something that disturbs us like this immediately we have to remember our Lord's challenging us to go deeper so it's not just words at face value there's a method going on here and so what we need to do is remember just in a basic sense that when we are rich and full and able to laugh and well thought of, poor human beings that we are, we could easily become very self-satisfied, very complacent, filled with pride, so much so that we start thinking, well, who really needs God? And maybe there's God, but really, who really needs God? We become independent. Whereas, when we think of someone who is poor, hungry, sorrowful, persecuted, that person needs God. That person depends upon God. But we even go further than that. Now, just as an aside, we're very familiar with St. Matthew's account of the Sermon on the Mount, where our Lord preached the Beatitudes seven Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit, and so on. St. Luke has recorded another version. We can't think or draw a false conclusion saying, well, is there something wrong here? Is one right, one wrong? No, Jesus is a great preacher and teacher. So like any preacher or teacher, he can repackage things in different ways on different occasions to make a point to the audience he's addressing. Same here. So probably St. Matthew addressed or included one version and not the other because he thought, why try to have two versions of the Beatitudes? Same thing with St. Luke. So that's an aside. But let's think of going deeper then. Here our Lord is contrasting this blessedness versus those who have woes. Now this isn't like, whoa, something good. This is like, whoa, curse kind of thing. So what is going on here? Our Lord says, blessed are the poor. He's not talking just about the economically poor. Consider, 
I have known people, some individuals, who are very wealthy, who are very humble, who are very generous. Nothing's wrong with that. And having worked in soup kitchens before, I've known poor people who are very greedy, very demanding, and very proud in the sense they think they're entitled. So there's not simply this economic sense. So the poorness that our Lord speaks of is a poverty of spirit. To be poor in spirit is to recognize God is God. We are creatures made in God's image. We have been baptized, so now we are children of God. We're part of a church. We're called to live a life of grace. You and I are called, therefore, to remember everything that we have is a gift from God to be used for God's glory, for the good of others, for our own good, too. All of us are rich in some way. Yeah, some of us here may be economically, materially wealthy. So be it. Some may be rich as far as a talent. Some may be in a personality. Some perhaps in some other ability. Some even just because of health. We're rich, but we should always be thankful to Almighty God. Woe to us if we're rich and we now think, well, who needs God? It's all about me. And we fail to give thanks. So the poverty of spirit moves us to always be grateful, recognizing God has given us all. For good reason, then. When we think about the Old Testament especially, the precepts were always, we give our first fruits back to God. We even tithe the 10%. This is what the Old Testament teaches. So when we think of our life, time, talent, treasure, do we take the time, good time, to give back to God through prayer? Like 30 minutes a day. When we think of 24 hours a day, we think of the time that we may spend on computers, internet, the, what is it, the cell phone, the texting, and so on. Do we give 30 minutes of good time back to God? Do we give talent back to God by serving our parish, our community? Do we share our material goods by supporting the mission of our parish, the church, other charitable organizations? We always are challenged then to remember that while we may be rich in many ways, we have to have that poverty of spirit. Our Lord goes on and he speaks then of blessed are those who are hungry. But here again, this is a spiritual hunger, a hunger for holiness. None of us should be satisfied with where we are on this path of holiness, but rather wanting to get better. So here with this path of holiness, we want to take time to increase our prayer life or our knowledge of the faith so that we can live that faith better. We should be doing our spiritual reading, reading of sacred scripture, but always that sense of hunger. I want to know more so I can love the Lord more. This is what it's about. If we think we're full, then we're satisfied and need nothing else, God help us. Maybe we should then have a statue made in our image, put it in the renovated church with a rack of candles and say, here I am. But rather, our Lord said, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And that verb to be means that we're constantly striving. All the saints knew they did not hit some plateau of holiness, but they hungered to grow in love with the Lord. Our Lord goes on. And he says that, blessed are those who weep. Well, we do mourn. You and I know that at times we face the loss of someone we love or some other situation. We do weep. But we also have to weep for our sins and seek forgiveness. We ought to weep for the sins of this world. Whenever I watch the news, I end up feeling sorrowful when I think of how some people treat each other, the violent crimes, things like that. Or then we hear about this cyberbullying and the vicious emails or text messages or Twitters and tweets, whatever they are. We know 
how sad that is, that human beings treat each other that way. And that should cause us to mourn. If we just laughed it off, God help us. If we rejoiced over someone's wrongdoing, God help us. But instead, we should mourn. Therefore, we should regularly take time to examine our conscience and go to confession and have joy, knowing that our merciful Lord never gives up on us, but he forgives us and wants us to grow in holiness. We should also think about doing penances to atone for the sins and bring about the conversion of this world. When I was growing up, as many of you were, that we had the Friday abstinence day where we ate fish, no meat. Friday was a day when we remembered Jesus died on the cross. And back then, growing up in Springfield, Virginia, you didn't have the variety of fish you do now. So oftentimes it was the tuna casserole and the Mrs. Paul's fish sticks, and that was a penance without question. <laughs> but nevertheless, it was good. We remembered Christ died for our sins, and we were doing that act of sacrifice. Well, then came the Vatican Council, and all of a sudden it was like, well, you can do some other sacrifice if you want. Well, that was all lost, and now we've forgotten. But really, Friday should be a day of sacrifice, where we do some kind of penance. Maybe it is abstaining from meat, or it's some other little sacrifice that we do, giving up sweets, or maybe the beverage for the day, whatever it may be. We should do that to atone for our sins and the sins of this world. Jesus said we conquer evil by prayer and fasting. So Friday should be a good day when we're very conscious of atonement. And then lastly, our Lord says, blessed are you when you are persecuted and not spoken well of. Well, here again, we have to think that if someone asks us, are you a Catholic? Immediately, that can spark a great conversation, right? And then if we say, yes, I'm pro-life, that I believe that all life is sacred from conception to natural death, that I believe in the dignity of each human being, that I believe marriage is between a man and a woman, the way God created this. I believe that God gave us a body and soul. They aren't in conflict with each other, and human beings are whom God made them to be. Boy, are we going to face persecution. And think of that. But that's living the truth of the gospel. If, on the other hand, we are well thought of because we just give in, we weasel out and say, like, well, I'm Catholic, but I'm pro-choice, or I'm really devout, but I'm endorsed by the National Abortion Rights Action League and Planned Parenthood, woe to us. Rather, we have to bear witness to the truth of being a Christian. And with that, we can laugh it off. Remember Jesus said, if you find yourself rejected, don't get discouraged. Shake the dust off your feet and keep moving on. Or I think of St. Vincent of Saragossa, Spain, a martyr of the year 300. He was being tortured in various ways because he would not give up his faith. And the Roman governor, Dacian, was just infuriated because Vincent wouldn't give up his faith. And Vincent said to him, Dacian, you make me so happy that you're enraged because of my faith. You laugh it off. And so, my brothers and sisters, our Lord is calling us to a deeper relationship. In the end, though, if we live that, we see the blessedness now and in heaven. Because if we are poor in spirit, we will be living the kingdom. We'll be living with our Lord now, and we'll see that fulfilled in heaven. If we're hungering for holiness in this life, that will be fulfilled in heaven when we sit at the banquet table of our Lord. If we really are mourning for our sins, one day those sins will be conquered without question, and we'll see the vision of God face to face in heaven. And if we're persecuted in this life, so be it. 
because one day our Lord will recognize us and say, well done, good and faithful servant. This is what makes saints. So we have to look at the Beatitudes and go deeper. Now with that, I'll give you two short examples. One is a saint who is a king. King Saint Louis IX of France. Now imagine a king. He lived in the year 1224, died in the year 1270, but you can imagine a king at that time. Castles, armies, wealth, power, all of that. But he's a saint. He did much to build up the church at the time, founding monasteries, dioceses. He also fought for the rights of the poor and did his best to make sure everyone was treated justly. He opened his home, his palace, the banquet hall once a week to feed the poor, and he is the one who waited on the tables. He did so much good in his life. As a matter of fact, I hope Father Pinizzato is listening, St. Francis de Sales used him as an example when he talked about spiritual poverty. A great saint who had so much but yet lived the Beatitudes. Then there's another saint, Saint Benedict Joseph Lebray. Not as well known. Born 1748, dies in 1783, just 35 years of age. He was born in southern France. He wanted to be a priest, and so he started applying to different communities. And back then, you knocked on the door of the monastery and said, I want to become a monk. Well, some would let him in, and they never accepted him after a few weeks because either he had poor health, which he did, or because they thought he was too eccentric. So he kept on trying, one monastery after the other, and he's making his way down to Rome. He's visiting all these holy sites, but by then, he's like a little beggar. He's just like a homeless person, one set of clothes, a rumpled hat, worn out shoes, a bag that has a couple of prayer books, and that's it. Well, he spends his last days, his last few years of his life in Rome. His home is the Colosseum, which back then was not a tourist attraction. It was a slum where beggars and homeless lived. And so he spent the nights there. During the day, he would go to the churches, and he would pray, attend Mass several times a day sometimes. He was so in tune with God, he even levitated sometimes when he prayed. At the Church of St. Maria de Monte in Rome, he was a frequent visitor, and the sacristan knew even the time of day when St. Benedict Joseph would be there and levitate so that then the sacristan could sweep underneath him. He, this was the life of a saint. And with that, he relied on just whatever he had. Sometimes people gave him food, he would share it with others. Some gave him money, he'd give it to the church. And then, if he was in a soup kitchen, he always was last in line so that the others could eat first. He died. And when he died, the children of Rome went through the streets proclaiming, the saint has died. When he was buried, he had a huge funeral People came more than they would for a bishop or even a priest. So my brothers and sisters, two examples, a sharp contrast, a king and also a poor little homeless beggar, but both saints, they lived the Beatitudes. So we're challenged to live the Beatitudes also. Take them to heart, reflect on them, because St. Paul leaves us with the challenge. Christ is risen. The tomb is empty. Our faith believes that, but our faith means we have to proclaim it. Christ risen has to be reflected in our lives. If we're living those beatitudes, he will be. Christ will be made present to others. May God bless you. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from the heavens, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and was Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to you through the cross. I believe in one holy hand and has all the church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, you said that where two or more are gathered in your name, that you'd be in their midst and hear their prayers. With this confidence, we offer these petitions. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice, security, and peace among nations, especially between Russia and Ukraine and China and Taiwan, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, intelligence, and diplomatic services to make peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith, and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all engaged and married couples, that in honor of St. Valentine's Day, they will be strengthened in their love and fidelity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of the construction workers and the success of our building project, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our children and teachers in school, especially at St. Agnes, that they will be safe from all harm and strive to do their best, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us. And for our parish seminarians, Tony Bennett, Mike Nugent, James Joseph, and Gabriel Gade, and for Ian Whalen and Caroline Jones, postulants with the National Dominicans, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for the sick and homebound, especially Helena Metzger, and for our deceased, especially Carolyn O'Donnell, mother of Kathleen Newland, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for the special intention for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for our own intentions which we offer in the quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear all our prayers, even those prayers held within our hearts, and to grant them in accord with thy divine will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Calling upon the prayers of our Blessed Mother, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen.
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The grace and glory of his name are good to all the Holy Church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness of the czars, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and ever and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
four box collection this weekend is from the Red Cloud Indian School, staffed by the Jesuits on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. All teens are invited to youth group this Tuesday at 7.30 in the gym. We will watch the third episode of The Chosen and follow with social activities. St. Joseph's League, our little men's group, meets this Thursday at 7.30 here in the catacombs. All men are invited to attend and we'll have time for beer and pizza and then follow with our discussion of Into the Breach. So if you've never been before, please do come. It's really a very nice group, good discussion. We're getting things moving. So young adults are invited this Friday to a talk on living a young adult spirituality presented by the Franciscan Sisters of the Holy Eucharist. We will begin at 7 p.m. with adoration and the opportunity for confession, continue with the talk at 7, and conclude with social time and refreshments. So all young adults, single and married, are invited to the parish hall for this event. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you, we humbly pray. And do thou, Christ, the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls.